Eric Burgess here, and we've been asked to find the mean and modal class. Now, in this case, we don't have specific numbers. You know how normally we have a list of numbers, and then we take those numbers and we add them all up and we divide by the number of numbers by the sample size, and that gives us a mean. Well, in this case, uh, we don't have that. We have instead these limits, and then we're told how many numbers are in each limit. Now, in a previous video, we talked quite at length about the formula that this would produce. If we assume that each of these numbers is a midpoint, so the formula we would get is that it's the sum of the midpoints times the frequency divided by the sum of frequency. And if you want a really good understanding of how this works and why it's true, I highly recommend checking out that video first. It's really gonna give you a strong foundation because in this video, I am not going to be explaining why this is true. I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. I've justified it in that other video. So let's go ahead and uh, dive right in. So first off, we need our midpoint. So we're going to have a midpoint column. And there's two ways to do this. There's the manual way, and then there is the, there is the way to do it with the calculator. So I'm gonna show you both ways, but we still need the midpoints for both of them. So the midpoint's the middle of these two, and to get the middle, we're going to add the two numbers and then divide by two. That'll give us the number, because we're basically putting the numbers together and then saying, what's halfway? So we're going to go, okay, 150 plus 158, and that's gonna give us a number, and then we say, what's halfway? We divide by two. Half of that is 154. You may be able to do this just by looking at it, but for those of you that want to use calculator, it's a little more relaxing, I think, to push the calculations off to a calculator. So we're going to go to 159 plus 167. We're going to get the next midpoint, just these two. We're going to get a number, and then we're going to divide that number by two. We get 163 is our next number. And now we're going to do the next one, 168 plus 176. That's going to give us a number, and then we're going to divide by two and we get 172. Now you may notice, right, each of these is the same amount apart, meaning that the distance from 163 to 154 is going to be the same as the distance from 172 to 163. So if we had a lot more of these, it would be advantageous to really quick find this. And so we'd say that it's nine. The distance is nine. And look at this. If we go from 163, 163, and we add nine, it gives us 172, the next midpoint. So a lot of people find this easier to do, especially when they get longer, it's a much faster thing to do. So if we just take 172 and we add nine, we get our next midpoint is 181. And we can keep going. So if we add like more and more, we don't have to do this add, divide by two, add, divide by two. We could just add nine, add nine, add nine. That's a property when we have things like class limits, they all need to be the same space apart. Uh, that's, a, that's a safe assumption you can make for the problems that we're doing. So that these are going to be our midpoints. And let me just verify this last one just to show you that indeed this is truly the case. Plus 185. And then we divide that by 2. We get 181. So just to put your mind at rest. So now we're going to use our formula. So we're saying take the midpoints, multiply by the frequency, do this for all the pairs, so like 154 times 5. Let's write it out. So if we were to write this formula out, we're saying that the mean is equal to, and then we're going to do this top piece first. So that's the midpoint. So the first midpoint is 154. So we have 154 times the first frequency, which is up here. It's 5. It's going to multiply by 5. Let me move this calculator out of the way now. And then it says, okay, we did, we did this middle part. Now it says add, add. That's what the sigma means. So add the next piece. So now we go to the next midpoint, which is 163 times the next frequency, which is 16. And then we go add, because that's what sigma says to do. We did this, add it to the next one. So we say, okay, well, the next one is 172 times 20, the next frequency. And then it says add, because we did it again. Then we have 181 times 21. And then at this point, we're all out of uh, midpoints. There's no more. So we're all done. So the sigma ends because we, we ran out of stuff. So now we put this division 
And then we're going to add the frequencies, which is going to be five, right? Sigma F means just add all the frequencies. Five, 16, 20, 21. And you see, we're doing the exact same thing for this sigma as we did for this one. We write the frequency, then we add, and we go to the next frequency. It's just for some reason, students, you, you can get intimidated sometimes by seeing more complex expressions, uh, but just do whatever it is. And then you just write add when you're done. And then you do it with the next set of numbers and the next set of numbers. It's just a really convenient way to write repetitive things. So, okay, now we're going to put this in the calculator. So this is a pretty complex expression. I'm going to use the fraction abilities of the calculator. So we're going to hit the green key and then go to F1 gives us the ability to type a fraction. So again, that's the F1 key up here. And we're going to do 154 times 5. Just write it exactly how it looks. No need to make it more complicated than it is. Times 16 plus 172 times 20 plus 181 times 21. We're going to go down to the bottom. It's going to be 5 plus 16 plus 20 plus 21. And you hit enter. We get a fraction out at the end. Don't let that scare you. There's a way to convert it. Just go to the green key and then F1. And we're going to come down here to fraction to decimal. And just hit enter. And we get out a decimal answer, which is 171 point two seven so this is the answer we get when we do it manually now there's a way to do this with the calculator and we can use that way to check to make sure we got the right answer so we can be really confident so we're going to go to stat we're going to go ahead and go to calculate or not calculate we're going to go to edit so in edit we have two lists so if you have stuff there just go ahead and clear them so just highlight the list and hit clear and push down Highlight the list, hit clear. You see the list clears, but you got to push down for this part to update. So, all right, with this, we're going to use this first list to put our frequencies in. Or no, we're going to use our midpoints first. I highly recommend putting midpoints first. Then we're going to put frequencies second. So our midpoints are 154, 163, 172, and 181. Our frequencies we're saying that there are five 154s there are 16 163s there are 20 and this follows directly right we're just doing the same thing we did in in the other video where we explained this a bit more so now that we have our lists keep in mind list one's midpoints list two is frequencies we're going to go to stat and to calculate and then in list one well, these are the numbers that we're using. These are the midpoints. The numbers that we're using are these numbers. I know we're using these ones, but these numbers are like the number of these numbers. So we're, we're kind of using these differently than these ones, which is again is clear in that other video. It's just kind of a, a lengthy explanation. So this is going to be our list one. Then our frequency list is going to be list two because that's where we put these. It's basically saying there are five of these, 16 of these. 20 of these. So it's doing the exact same thing this calculation is doing, um, but it's just doing it according to these two lists instead. So now we're going to go ahead and hit calculate, and it gives us a mean of 171.27 when you round, and that is the exact same thing we got here. However much you round is going to be dependent on your professor. Most want you to do between two and three decimal points, somewhere around there. Some want more, some want less, some, you know, it just depends on your teacher. So there you go. That is how you do this. Now, it, that's just the mean though. So we need to find the modal class. So the modal class is just a class with the highest frequency. So in that case, this is the modal class. It's got the, the highest frequency, 21. It's the biggest one, modal class. And that's all you got to do. If you have any questions about this, feel free to drop a comment down below, subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. If you're a Citrus College student, definitely feel free to stop by online tutoring. We're there to help you out, and we'll catch you in the next problem.